Okay, welcome to the August 20th meeting from the Budget Committee. This is the first meeting after the uh, town meeting, so uh, it's more of an organizational and uh, see, what's, see what's what type of meeting. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes from the last meeting that we had, which was the April 22nd meeting. Uh, went out, there was a couple of corrections that uh, people had, and those got integrated in there. Are there any other changes or additions? Make a motion to accept the minutes of April 22nd. All those in favor? Opposed. Uh, second order of business is uh, the elect the chair for this year. I'd like to nominate Rob Olson to continue Second. as our chair. Any other nominations? Motion to close nominations. I'll move to close nominations. Second. Okay. All those in favor of Rob Olson as the chair? Opposed? Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we have, you know, in the past we have not had a uh, vice chair, uh, and I don't know what the feeling of the members are, whether we want to have one or not, or... I think we should, just for... In case uh, you get busy. In case they get run over by a truck? <laughs> you never know. I, and if we do, I'd, I'd like to uh, nominate Marshall. I'd second that. So, he's been here, and you, uh, there's a lot of guys that have been here for a long time, and if he would, if, you know... Or Peter, doesn't matter. Well, you, you moved Marshall out. Yeah. was a second. Yeah. So. I'll second yeah. Marshall. Any other nominations? A motion to close nominations? Make so motion. made. Second. <laughs> All those in favor of Marshall as the vice chair? Opposed? Okay. Uh, part of what we wanted to do tonight was. Uh, look at what things are going to help us as far as uh, items to look at and whatnot as we get ready to look at the, at the next budget cycle and whatnot. So uh, kind of want to leave, you know, open that up and see what, what information people felt useful, what more information that they want and things like that so that uh, uh, we can have what people need in order to uh, make decisions and ask questions. Dana? Um, what I'd like to see, uh, Rolf, is uh, uh, sh shorter meetings, uh, having workshops. Uh, town of Gray does it, uh, a couple other towns that do it. Uh, they have workshops and sometimes they'll, uh, they'll address two departments in one night and Sometimes it'll be only one, but uh, these marathon meetings, uh, I don't feel they're productive, and uh, it just, it's just my opinion, but uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to see uh, uh, meetings getting done at 9 o'clock. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that, I left early at that long, long one last year. I had to, but, uh, uh, you know, it's... I think uh, if we take it uh, a little, uh, you know, in smaller increments, uh, we, we talk to department heads. Um, let's say we do uh, town hall and then if we can that same night uh, do public works. If not, continue it for another night and, and do fire department and uh, TIF and all that. Uh, I mean, it's, I kind of in agreement with that. One, one thing I saw was it seemed like everything was pushed up to a very, very extremely tight schedule. Mm -hmm. And I understand that the town, that the, 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 all the department heads have to get their budgets in order. It, but if there would be some way to get it, maybe there's a department that can mm. get up front. They can get their stuff done earlier. So we could, the whole process could start earlier. Mm -hmm. You could take it in smaller increments rather than wait till everybody's ready and then you're down to a matter of not even months. Yeah. Plus, it gives us a chance to, to ask more uh, uh, questions that are more uh, uh, effective. Um, you know, it, it's last minute stuff that happened uh, last year, and you know, it's it's happened before. It's not the first time, and you know, I'm not complaining about it. It's just uh, 
it, it's harder to prepare if we know we're going to be talking about the town, uh, the municipal side, and public works or whatever uh, ahead of time. Uh, it gives us gives us a chance to, you know, to, to prepare for you know the questions that we we need to ask the uh, the department heads and. Uh, Doing it all in one night, it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, Marshall. What would make sense to me <clears throat> is that we get together more or less on a quarterly basis, mm -hmm. looking at the June, September, December, and March reports. Um, if we got together a month after that for an hour and a half or so, we would have a chance to look at some variances that may or may not be starting and we would have a heads up as to what we would anticipate the next budget to look like. And I think that would coincide with Dana's thought. We cut down a lot of time at the end because it's everything is at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think if we looked at it at a quarterly basis, wouldn't take us much more than an hour and a half. We can continue the emails that go back and forth, ask questions that way, and then <clears throat> no surprises in the end. Mm -hmm. I think we're all trying to avoid that. <clears throat> I agree with that, and, and I'd like to fold a little additive into that, where the appropriate appropriations control report uh, provides our, our spending throughout the year. Mm -hmm. But nowhere in that document does it provide percentage of year, or you know, we're halfway through the year, or 60% through the year, in terms of, you know, our, our, of our spending. Mm -hmm. uh, without doing the math with your fiscal year variative, but to to incorporate percent of year in that in that report would help us to uh, to foresee whether or not we are spiking in certain areas, or or you know whether maybe underfunding in other issues. areas. Or, you know, whether it's just timing issues of yeah. uh, you may have a you may have a single bill that comes in on something in an area, or you may have it quarterly or whatever. So. Okay. It's like I already have questions on public works spending from this one here. I mean, uh, so I'll be writing those down. And these these reports, I mean, you know, they're they're, they're monthly. So it's if if we can meet quarterly, that then, then, uh. yes, I certainly support Dana's idea of the maximum of a two-hour meeting because I think we tend to lose our focus after that. I know I do. <clears throat> and I don't think after two hours that we're doing the job that we're capable of. I think it falls out of productivity as a well-meaning committee falls off drastically. Right. Uh, just a couple of comments. One is I really like uh, the comment that I was going to make before this conversation. I really hadn't thought about Dana's point, but I think it does link to what Marshall was saying. Was I, the utilization of the revenue control document is one that we haven't used much and I think that idea of kind of getting ahead of it and looking at it and seeing what the variances are and I think anything we can do to make that more friendly to us if it is an additional column and there are going to be variances because not obviously yeah. not every every budget item least, gets spent evenly so but it, it could let us start to kind of anticipate where budgets might go and even engage in that whole process a little bit longer which to Dana's point would also hopefully help us with Having fewer questions when when we are actually in the uh, you know in in the in the sessions themselves, so I, I'd be all in favor of that. My only comment about meetings is because I travel a lot, it, it it does get a little bit more difficult to schedule. But but maybe I do think that some kind of limitation, whether that's two or two and a half or three, I think that probably makes some kind of sense. So my only concern would be the more times we are meeting, the more likely, and this may be really good news for the rest of you. Uh, the more, more likely I am not to be able to attend. <laughs> well, yes. one question on the revenue control report. I, would, I was sort of led to believe, and I don't know where I got this idea, that that was sort of a canned report in that it would be quite difficult to change the format of it. I just, do you happen to know, does anybody here know whether that is... Well, it, I mean, it's, it's driven out of the the accounting system. I mean, so, so certainly possible to change it. Yeah, uh, you know, and it depends on it. You know, I think it would depend on what it is that you're trying to see. You know, if, if it's supplement to that or something like that. That you, you know, uh, 
I mean, this this ties back to the you know to all the budget accounts, which then ties back yeah. to what, you know how they can how, how they can audit against against uh, accounts and things like that. So you you know you can't do you know I mean data you know data how it gets presented is always kind but, of valuable. So we but, you know, uh, but if there's something specific that you're looking for, then I can you know, we can certainly ask for it to be presented in a certain way because I think some of that is just uh, formatting a you know a different report yeah. or something like that. Is it is the data entry performed all by town staff right here? Must be. Yeah because it's that's, yeah. that's all that's all through the so, accounting system. Okay. See okay. I don't know. So that's the accounting system is a big system that totally the town of Raymond owns it. It wasn't something they purchased. Well, it would we, be difficult we, to change. I think we lease it, but I mean, you know, what you're, you know, you know, what you're talking about is output reports, mm -hmm. which are, you know, which, you know, you know, we can request, you know, we can request a, a difference in a report. I think that's, I don't think that that becomes an issue. You can't change the underlying data that's under there no, because no, that's, no. that's 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 your, you know, just, that's your accounting just that's your accounting system. Well, all you're talking report. about. You know, you may want to see either something in addition or something that presented right. slightly different, which is what yeah. Bob wanted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I understand what Bob was saying, was that really what we need is maybe one more column, which is a variance column, which is, okay, we're, we're in, you know, we're six months through the year, so we, we're at 50% of the budget would hypothetically be spent. And, you know, and where are we? And where are we related to that? So it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy math equation, I yeah. think. I know, I know like QuickBooks can do their ends. Well, also, if you look at this appropriations report, there are three what I would call unused columns, mm -hmm. which could be recategorized. To, to fit, them, to fit right. them on, yeah, right, so yeah. wouldn't even, yeah, good point. I have no objections to cutting the meetings down to a reasonable time frame. Um, although that, that would create uh, an increased commitment on this committee for more meetings, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it would change basically the format that we've followed in the past, and um, whether or not we we could be all present for all of those meetings would would be you know an issue, but uh, I, I'm I'm willing to to lend a ear in that direction. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, is there a reason why we can't start earlier? No, uh, I think Six, you know, se uh, seven o'clock had been the time because you know it used to be you know, people chance to get home and whatnot. But I, you know, I mean, uh, six thirty. If it worked, you know, I mean that's the other thing that we wanted to, you know, that we wanted to talk about was uh, actual meeting night and things like that. And, you know, uh, the starting time if we if we want to start at six thirty, that's that's not an issue. It's because uh, essentially when we you know when we have when we schedule schedule this, we've got it from. Whenever we just said that blocks it out. So, uh, you know, as long as as long as all the as long as all the you know the members can get there for 6:30, I have no problem with that. At least we've we've done that on you know, we did that with the scouts and things like that on the committee meetings. Here we went to 6:30. 6:30 wouldn't be an issue for me. Fine by me. <laughs> Another thing, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll check out, I'll, I'll check out all of. I mean, the, the, the breaking it up, you know, we just, you know, I guess it's a function of trying to look at that a little bit and, you know, how best to break that up so that, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you, know, you probably want public works and, and what, you know, I mean, you know, you'd want whatever Nathan has got. Have those be one night, and then have you know fire fire is a separate you know fire well, rescue. Those are two big separate. ones. I yeah. Mean. Yeah. yeah, long. And really, you go back to the, my recollection of the meetings. It, it really wasn't fair to those department heads. I, I, Chief Tupper was sitting here until really late. Where, where I'm sure he would have said, rather come back on another night. Yeah. And it kind of ties up less of the um, town. Yeah, and it, you know, and, it, and then you can look at the. Uh, you know, things like the library and, and some of the small ones and do it all, all in one night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, so they don't have to sit through the... <laughs> of course, I don't you know whether that's penance or if that's... <laughs> Ralph. Yeah, Bob. I, I'd like to maintain a, a regular meeting night, be it Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever. 
uh, and whether or not the broadcast studio would be regularly available at the intervals that we decide to meet at. Um, bouncing around from different nights of the week may be hard to commit to. Yeah. No, I think we, we, you, know, we you know, Monday night got uh, picked back many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> uh, simply, and I think it, act, you know, it may have just simply been the fact that, uh, I mean, it goes back to the days of Howard Acker when he was chairman. It may have been that was the day that he had available. So, you know, <laughs> uh, it's just been one of those, you know, there's nothing magical about the fact that it's a, a Monday night, but uh, what we want, you know, and then it's just a, you know, then it's just a scheduling function, looking to see what, you know, because there's certain nights that, you know, like the planning board has a certain night that they have, which is the, like the second or third. Second week, Wednesday. You know, and the school board, you know, the uh, school board has their, you know, their, you know, so it's just, you know, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, looking at the schedule and, and scheduling around and other commitments that are in here. But, I mean, that's. That's what calendars are for. Are we still capable of uh, recording meetings at town hall and showing them later? We are. Yeah. Yeah. The only issue you can run into is if there's a meeting here and Dom's doing that. Then, yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if there were, you know. Uh, do you do? Do you do the school board meetings, Dom? You do. I do uh, some of them. Some ones of them. That are in the other station. Because there's one tonight, tomorrow night, right? That's gonna be. Yeah. All right. That. I can even, I can probably even make it live from the yeah. station. I mean, yeah. from the town hall. Need be. Louise? The only thing I'd like to say about that is the table's still there, but we really don't have any infrastructure other than that set up for meetings at this point. Not that we couldn't do it, but. We don't so need too possible. many. I mean. <laughs> said, we don't need too many chairs. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there would have to be some moving around. Yeah. Stuff. Town hall space, Louise, was just as spacious as this, I think, when we were over there for select board meetings. No, yeah, A little bit, you know. There's there's different things over there now. And, I mean, you don't have Ken sitting behind me anymore, but. <laughs> He used to sit behind me all the time, but uh. the other thing I'd like to say about Mondays is that really this was the only committee that met on Mondays, yeah. so you never had to bump heads with another committee. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it just it, makes you know, it hard. But I mean, it's a it's a function of you know, it's a function of of pre-planning. If we you know, if we all can make the commitment that you know, Tuesday night is a better night or Wednesday night or I mean. Fridays are lousy. You don't want to do Fridays because people are people are trying to, trying to that. Uh, <laughs> Steve's trying to get to the mountain. And, you know. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, by and large, Fridays are a terrible night for a meeting. Uh, you know, so what's the feeling on what what night is better for people? For me, Mondays are great because I'm less likely to be traveling. Because as the week goes on, yeah. I kind of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is my tends to be my time out. Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday. Monday. Just makes it hard to get information on Monday. Town halls closed. Uh -huh. you know, that's, that's, Monday, that's the that's the issue I have. Yeah, you know, I have our information wait for Monday. I mean, if we have a Monday meeting, we don't. We're gonna wait till four o'clock on Monday to get our information. Yeah, I know, but we're getting it on Friday, and we can't download it, Steve. That's the problem. And when you can't download it, you got to come to a meeting unprepared, and I don't like to do that. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, did it work better with having Luis uh, print it off and have a, a copy in the uh, yeah is, thing there, so that uh, you know if, if you you know if you get an email that says that you know stuff is there, then is that a problem to pick it up? Well, on if it's Friday? ready, at, uh, you know, on Friday, uh, but you know, it's we got to know Thursday if it's going to be ready Friday. It's, yeah. Because you know, town hall is going to be closed Saturdays, uh, starting at the end of the month. So right. He, and I don't, I don't go in. I don't have a code to get in town hall to get uh, my mail, nor do I want one. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I think we can arrange it. Yeah. Yeah, things but that was the problem them. last year. We yeah. we were getting stuff on Friday, couldn't download it, and Monday we town hall was closed. Uh, 
So. All right, so what I'm still hearing is that Monday still appears to be the preferable meeting. But starting at 6.30. Well, Mr. Chairman, can I ask one question? I mean, we're not talking three or four meetings a month here, are we? No. M Monday is my day off. I mean, I'm not going to... No. Uh, personal. I mean, I, I don't mind once a month or whatever, but the usually we started meeting in February, and we were done in three or four meetings. We're not talking... 10, 12 meetings now, are we? I mean, no. They don't have their information ready to support to us until after the first of the year. No, I would. I mean, I mean, I, I would suspect by you know by breaking it up, what we what we're probably adding is probably two additional meetings. Okay. I mean, you, you can't ask the fire department to come and give us information they don't have. Right. Or 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 t any other part of the town. One thing. Uh, one thing I like about the quarterly idea, though, is what I see is. Potentially, the information that we want, we can request far enough in advance. I, I'm, and I'm really thinking not days or even yeah. weeks. So when they do come, we have already we already know what we information we want. They come prepared, and it's, it's, it moves a lot faster rather than this frustration yeah. of yeah, I mean, last-minute type stuff. I mean, the quarterly meeting would not be broken up. The, the quarterly meeting would be, you know, you look at, you, you got the, I mean, because essentially what you're looking at there is you're looking for red flag items. It's, you know, something, right. something's, something's out of whack, you know, because, you know, I mean, you, you, when you think about it, you know, when the, you know, the budget starts getting developed and it's, you know, you're, you're, I mean, you're so far out from when it actually is going to be, you know, now you're starting to, you know, now it's finally in there and running and now you see what's going on, but you almost cast the stone for the next one. So you want to see if there's things that are gotchas that are coming up as you, know, as you go through there. Because uh, you know it could be a one-time thing. It could be something that we need to, you know, it needs to be accounted for and planned for for going forward. So. Any other issues on meeting night and schedule? Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, you know, I'll filter that in and see what, uh, you know, how that how that can work in the in the schedule. But on the on the quarterly meetings, what, you know, I would say what we want to do on the first one is the the end of the year report isn't ready yet because it's still going through it's going through the auditor. Once that's done, then we can get together having that in hand. And that will actually, you know, that would give the end of the year, and we'll probably we'll have July and August in hand at that point. So, so maybe October, November. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to bring up, Ralph, uh, is clarification on uh, um, who's going to who's going to be running the meetings. Uh, if we have a budget finance committee meeting, um, I'd really uh, it'd be nice to have you run it. Or, or Marshall, mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, uh, the select board. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's, we're our own committee and I think we can, uh, we can do a good job without getting too much input from, uh, we need input from the, the taxpayers, not, not the select board. Well, I mean, part of, you know, part, you know, by, by breaking it up the way that we're talking about now, uh, part of what we did there is going to change anyway, because uh, it was, you know, that was trying, that was, that marathon one was really trying to keep, have all the department heads in at one time, so by breaking it up, it's going to make that a little bit different, too. So, but I, I hear what you're saying. Marshall? The other thing in regards to the quarterly meetings, if we go forward with that idea, I, I don't personally see a need for department heads or town staff to be there. Well, I think the only, the only one that I think uh, we may want to, uh, you know, and, and some of it could be the fact that, uh, you know, we'll have, the, we'll have that report prior to the meeting anyway. Right. So if you see something that, you know, that, that's... You know, is, is giving a cause for a question. It, it may be advantageous for us to have uh, Nancy available to Okay, or, or perhaps by invitation only yeah. or something yeah, like so that. that we can, so you know, we can say, listen, I don't, I don't you know, want to tie yeah, them up. You know, we, you know, we can say, listen, you know, here's, you know, here's, here's where some of the questions are. Right. And, you know, so that way she'll know what information to have mm -hmm. available to. Okay. 
Mr. Chair, that it brings a point up, which is that it seems to me there's a process here, which is as we set up that quarterly cadence, we have a review. From that review, then are going to be some questions likely. So part of maybe what needs to get checked out is the process and whether with the town manager, what's the, what's, or here's our suggestion of how we'd like to do that. So we would, I mean, a thought that comes to my mind is we would accumulate those questions. Those questions would then get distributed to the appropriate people mm -hmm. for response or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we may want to think through the entire process of, of how that then loops back. Mm -hmm. Because if we're even, if we're meeting on a quarterly basis, that's a long gap. So that's, yeah. you know, we, probably want to work through that and just make sure that that is the most efficient way. I, I agree with Marshall. I don't think you need to have all the staff no. here on those quarterly meetings. No. But but by invitation or if there's something that's coming up and we go, gee, it'd, it'd behoove us to have that conversation now, then it makes sense. To yeah. Well, we could always to ask the question to Rolf or Marshall uh, yeah. prior to the meeting. And uh, if there's something that comes up, you know, yeah. just ask and yeah. yeah. do, uh, you know, Rolf or Marshall, could you, you can... Uh, talk to whoever Nate or you yeah. know, department head and you know, get us the answer. Yeah. I'm still waiting to you know, find out what the, when the when the audit's going to be finished. So once we once we once we know that, then we can then we can schedule that next meeting. Once I know when we're going to have the uh, when we'll have the reports in hand. But I mean from a from a practical standpoint it'll probably be I mean end of you know at, end of September early earliest and probably beginning of October or something like that. So let's say I think the auditors will do next week. Okay. So another week after that and then probably yeah. takes some months to get the report. Yeah. Okay. We're still on number four, we're on five. Oh, we're <laughs> looking at early well, that was, late that was, October. That was fine. We haven't finished four, have we? Before was uh, oh if if you've got more yeah oh okay yep no, that's fine <laughs> I and if we're done with the, the meeting schedule yeah um, one thing I one reason I really wanted to be at this meeting was one thing that really didn't set well with me was the discussion of um, the employee raises with and the town manager being the, the the big one pushing for it and he was in essence going to be the the largest beneficiary. Um, is there a possibility that the Budget and Finance Committee could recommend to the Select Board that they, since that, that position is the only contract position in the town, can in fact his compensation be separated? And so when they go into his, all in you know, renewing his contract and everything else, any increase I would hope, would think would, should be part of that discussion so that he can come to the Budget and Finance Committee and make a, an argument for employee increases without any um, personal involvement in it. They'd, See, have, they'd have to change the writing in his contract. Well, I mean, that's, I, just, I just felt very uncomfortable yeah. because anytime, in my, my opinion, anytime that you're personally benefiting, you should recuse yourself, exactly. but he really can't because that's kind of his role, so he was, he was really caught in a, yeah. a well, no-win. But, yeah, but I mean, they, 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 you know, the, the, the select board has a separate negotiation with him on Increase on his increase when he's developing the budget. You know the the only you know, unless your question is on timing, uh, time when the time. But when he's when he's coming coming out and saying he's recommending a you know a, a two percent or whatever right. increase for the for the employees, his is his is not included in that because his that's is not what I was. Yeah, told. It is. That's not how I was told. He gets if he if he decides this year that he's not going to take a raise. It's written in his contract that if the rest of the employees get a three, three or two or one percent raise, the town manager automatically gets one, and that's that's a fact. That just didn't. So he, he, you get you, at one meeting, you can say, "Well, I, I'm not going to take a raise. We're going to we're going to you know be fiscally responsible. I will not take a raise. But if the rest of the employees get a raise, he automatically gets one. That's the way his contract is written." I probably shouldn't be saying this, but that because I'm a former selectman, but that's the way his contract. Is no, I, I, asked, well, I asked the question through the, uh, anyway. Yeah, I asked the, the question through the process, and that's I believe that's what I was told, and I just didn't. You know, I just I just feel that just for transparency, I don't hate that term, but um, 
it would really make it, there's no way he's going to be looking like he's um, in any way arguing for his own benefit. Mm -hmm. if, if, in fact, the selectmen could do that, um, that would, I would think it would, it would make life easy. It would make things clearer, mm -hmm. a lot of cleaner, I think. Okay. Brian? You know, this is part of a conversation that I'm hoping we'll have as the compensation committee comes back with maybe some findings and recommendations and the like. But one of the things that, and I know it's difficult to do that I'd like to see at least considered is this getting away from just this flat across the board percentage raise. Yeah. So if that, to Dana's point, if there's something in the contract that locks, I mean, so in other words, if, if we were to start to kind of actually create merit increases where there was some kind of variation between either departments, employees, et cetera, and I'm not suggesting that, I'm just saying if that's something we want to consider, we should probably figure out now whether that's even something we should have a discussion on if the contract for the town manager precludes that type of arrangement. Mm -hmm. So that would be an interesting thing. I'm giving you a, a heck yeah. of a good list there for all to <laughs> check out. I'm willing to take on part of it if you want. They've so. talked about merit based. It's tough. I mean, it's a lot more work. Well, you know, think. in the real world, Brian, that's, that's how it's done. Exactly. No, you, know, no. yeah. you work hard, you make money. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you don't. Now, don't know if that's a recommendation that can come from the budget or should come from the budget and finance to the select board. Could. That's yeah. within our purview to at least explore it, oh. you know, I would suggest. Following down that same line, mm -hmm. um, and I think I give some agreement here, um, the Boston CPI, that, that really didn't set well with me either. I, but this isn't Boston. Uh, the cost of living really did go up much faster higher in Boston last year than it did in Raymond. Um, is there, and this guy, again, probably goes back to the compensation committee, is there a better measure that we could be using rather than tying everything to the cost of living in Boston versus Raymond? And that's, yeah, I mean, when I, when I talked to, <clears throat> to taxpayers and said, yeah, well, we're, we're basing all this on the cost of living in Boston, they looked at me like, what? Well, <coughs> yeah, well, Jerry, I mean, you know, they weren't, you know, I mean, when it comes, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to what percentage are you going to, what percentage are you going to deal with. So, I mean, if you look at that indice, it says that the, you know, that the cost of living increased by 2%. If you look at another one, it says it increased at 1.5%, uh, but we end up giving 1.5 or 1, doesn't matter which ones you looked at anyway, because at the end of the day, it comes, you know, it gives you, know, it gives you a starting point to, you know, well, but I mean, what you've got is, you know, there's a federal one, there's a state one. I don't know if there's, I don't know, actually, does the, the state, the state the have a, from the CPI, the have a CPI? Got. I mean, there's the research that I Boston. Yeah. yeah, there are things that are main yeah. base, but they're not, they're not consumer price index. Yeah. Because you get, you get the re exactly you've got the, you've got the, there's a, there's a but federal, that's thing you get a federal which is regionalized, but it's, it's a, I don't know if it's a northeast region or how that how that breaks down. And the only thing is, you said it was a starting point. That was the one thing in the budget that it ended up being more of an end point <laughs> right away. I mean, we, there, we actually took a straw vote, and then it was right down. There was 50-50, and the next thing I knew, the selectmen were voting on it. And there was I never voted on that in, in, in this committee. It went just boom. So I think something a little bit more accurate. To the to the, especially when you get into a situation like this where we're in a recovery, and Boston's going to recover a lot faster um, than we are. So when we're getting in these drops and, and recoveries, it's it's not. I don't think it's that great of a measure. Some give for compensation again. Yeah. Okay. Why do we use that index? Is there, is there something written that says we use the Boston no. CPI? Is that we've done that for years and years, and that's why we use it? You know, it's a, it's an it's it's an indicator. It's a public indicator. Just you pull it up, Wall Street Journal. There it is. Okay. There's actually state information. If I um, there is state information. Yeah, state information USM on things like salary, yeah. for example. Yeah. But it's it gets really specific. It does. Like you know, like the gym doctors and yeah. neurosurgeons yeah. and these really kind of very, Charles very, Colgan's gets. Hmm? Charles Colgan's get. So Col Colgan does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, both. Oh, at, at, he's USM or is yes. he UMaine? Okay. USM. Because that might be a better. That is probably something we should explore. Let me keep going on my list. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that the other things that the um, 
this is more in the capital, somewhere in the capital um, CIP. Mm -hmm. The projects. Yep. Um, I actually, I don't know if anyone else did it. I went down and I met with Chief Tupper on the paving, the forty thousand dollars that we approved for paving for District One. Because I basically said, "What are you going to spend forty thousand dollars on?" Um, so I went down and actually looked at the paving issues. And speaking with him, I said, "Well, it's actually there's it's four dips in front of each of the doors." Basically, what happened was um, they didn't compact the soil well enough when they went and paved it. And so as moving those the, the big trucks in and out, we've got four divots in front of each door. And I asked him, I said, well, well where did the $40,000 come from? Well, he just kind of, he's told me, he just basically said, well, I kind of used what the, the, the past paving project cost, which was down that, the road, which has really nothing to do with the current project. Then, just before... Uh, we passed, I was talking to um, Nate, and he says, oh, well, no, part of that money is going to go pave District 2. And, but the line item says paving District, that's, that's the only specifics we had. We didn't, there was no de more detailed explanation, and I think it would help the committee if we had a little bit more detail on what is the project, what's the scope, where did the estimate come from? I mean, it's fine that they've, you know, but where did we come up with this number? Mm -hmm. um, because I think next year it's going to be really tight. And so I think, <laughs> especially on projects, we're going to want to know, okay, specifically what is going to be done with this money and how much do you really need to do it? Because I, I think you could, for just for the paving problem, District 1, it's not 40000 at all. Um, but, again, we... I, if we can blow, explode those out and ask each department head for a little bit more, um, would so save them time, probably save us a lot of time too. Um, and on the last issue, <laughs> can I, can I add uh, that? Sure. Please, Steve. Um, I think in most town projects that we require RFP, uh, request for a proposal, the, the, the standard is set for the work to be performed, and, and then bids are provided by. Uh, contractors in the area and the best contractors with the best references receive the job. I think maybe what we need to do is review those RFPs uh, to, to see that, you know, that will provide the all-encompassing fact of what's going to be performed in those work processes. Right. That's what I thought. And that's when I started talking about when I went down and met with them on this one. I, there was no RFP. There was no, none of that was generated. I think what was going to happen was Public Works was going to basically hire someone to come in and repay. I, I'm not sure what was going to happen, but uh, it didn't appear that anything like that had been put together. Well, that, that begs the question, do we have a floor for an RFP? Is it 50000 Is it 10000 Is it 100000 hmm. where, where do we decide to go with an RFP, and where do we decide, decide to do it in turn? I would bet that there's a Anything over $5,000, you, you should have an RFP. I, I think I would disagree with uh, that. That may be a little, a lot of paper. That may be a little light, but you know, <clears throat> part part of the yeah, I mean you know, and then part of the issue you run into is an estimate versus the actual cost. Because you know you, right. you're you're going to estimate it, and then when you get ready to do it, then you're going to go out. You've got to go out for a bid on it because you're going to make the award against the bid. So uh, so from here to there, because the problem you run into is you can't get you can't get a formal bid because the project hasn't been approved. <laughs> right. No, I... <laughs> so, you know, no, I, I and it's all... You know, but again, it's, it's, it's contingent it's, on town meeting, Rolf. Well, yeah. I mean, that's... You know, that's, you know but... I mean, there's... I've done bids like that all the time. Well, that's... Uh, yeah, you know, the, award, the award is... But you'll I mean, get the job if we get... If we pass town meeting. But the... You know, when you're, get, when you're out there getting your initial estimates... Estimates are free. Yeah. Mine are. But I guess, I don't know if anyone here on this committee knew really the details of that $40,000. I, I didn't. Um, I don't think anyone else, you know, it was, we were in a big rush. We looked at $40,000, okay, paving. But um, I just happened to, I had other reasons to go talk to him. I'm going to stop. That's, a, that's when I said, well, where, you know, I started asking the questions. It would just, I think it would be helpful with a, just asking for more detail, description. Is it going out to RFP? Have you got an official bid, or is this is this just a back of the envelope estimate, or so we we know where where these numbers come from a little bit better? Um, 
tied into that, um, I guess in the private sector, we call it you know, either make or buy decisions. Mm -hmm. um, what I saw happening and I see happening is, um, I can't think of a specific example, but let's say Public Works looks at a situation where I'm going to, should we do this project in-house or should we hire somebody? Okay, the private contractor is going to have all of his costs involved in that, including overhead. And granted, profit's part of that. Mm -hmm. What I see happening is when we compare it to this town of Raymond, we're just taking our variable costs. There's no overhead. So I'll guarantee you, Public Works is going to come in cheaper every time. So we just take our hourly employees and our equipment costs with no overhead, we're going to be, Town Ram's going to be cheaper. Yeah, I guess there's no overhead well, built into any of the departments. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, private industry, you're under GAPA, but under municipalities, you're under, it's a, di it's a different accounting system and different accounting standards. I'm not sure how that, how that factors for that. I mean, there's got to be a way, too, because, I mean, you've got, you, you know, essentially what you're saying is, you, you, know, you, you, you know, you're taking your, your labor rate plus fringes plus... Building, you know, you're building your, your yeah. um, supervisory, yeah. your CEO, your, you know, your, your finance department, your accounting department. If you look at, really, the overhead that the fire department generates with the payroll, but that's never really counted in because that's done up in accounting, and that falls under a different budget category. Um, I just think I was. I don't know if it's possible in a municipal government to come up with some kind of overhead rate, saying, "Okay, if you're going to do a, a project, you need to apply this overhead rate to at least get apples and crab apples." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, equipment breaks down. You got to repair it, and they just worked on the grader there. I don't know how much they spent on that, but I mean, it's a piece of equipment that we you know, use two or three times a year. And, I think it would be a question for more for, I think, Nancy. How can we at least, at least, I'm not saying we should tip it so that it always was a private contractor, but at least so that it's equivalent. So the, the private contractors at least have a chance. I think that if, if we have the town employees that can support the, the workload, why go to contract when we already have a... Because we may not need that many employees. Contract. Do we need that many employees? Four. <coughs> hmm? Four public, sir, public works employees? Well, this goes back to town of Casco. Cost per mile is significantly lower than, than the town of Raymond, and they have none. They use all private contractors, and their cost per mile for roads is all, around $8,000 a year, where ours is at twelve. But that's just for plowing. Where are they no, no, that's, that's not. That's, that's, that's everything. <clears throat> and they plow not private paving. roads. But then, it, you know, it also gets into the situation, you know, it gets into the variable, too, on what are the, you know, what are the, what is the populace expecting? expecting the, the roads in Casco are not to the same condition as the roads in Raymond. So, you know, where do you want to be? You know, and so you run, you know, you, you kind of run into some of that. Well, I'm saying, I'm, if, if yeah. Casco spent 12000 well, all I'm saying is, is that, they're doing it with private contractors, or we're doing it with public works. Okay, it's two models. All I'm, all I'm saying is, if going down the road, it would be good to be able to compare properly. I mean, if, if Casco turned around and started spending $12,000 a mile on, with private contractors, I bet their roads are going to be a lot better. Absolutely. So. They're tight with their dollar. <laughs> I went to one of their meetings a couple months ago, and it was in regards to private roads plowing, and they want to change of standards. And, um, yeah, it was an interesting meeting. That's it. That's it. Okay. Other issues? I have one, oh. one issue that yep. just came to mind. Uh, I, uh, and I appreciate Steve's accountability. I really do. I think it's good to get it out in the open. But, but I don't think the budget committee is the watchdog committee. Yeah, accountability is great. We all need the accountability. But I don't think it's the budgets committee's responsibility to follow the town employees around and, you know, and watch what they're doing every second. No. And that's that's where some of this conversation seems to be going. Accountability. I, I don't think we had enough accountability in the last three years. I was in the budget committee. I, I agree with you 100%. We need we need to look at accountability. But 
I don't think we're the watchdog committee. I don't want to go to the watchdog committee. If we don't trust our town employees, then that's then we better do something different. I do want to respond to that because I am not following people around. I'm just I'm not, not being I'm, no. What I brought up here is much more process in the right. budgetary process, and and right. and how do you in fact make those make versus buy decisions? Yeah, I agree with that. And that's that's all I'm bringing up is in fact that aspect of it. I saw that in, in talking with with Nate it was well. One thing that stuck in my mind when he, when I had a conversation with him was we're always cheaper. Well, how can you always be cheaper than private industry? That just kind of goes against my philosophy. <laughs> if you, you know, um, and then I, that's why I started looking at it. Well, I started looking at well private industry because private industry has the same cost plus overhead plus some profit, and we're not we're not doing the accounting on this side the same. That's all I'm saying. No, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, the only other, the other, the only other thing that comes into into play on when you go into doing a lot of subcontracting is you best be having a bulletproof document to start with because otherwise you're going to pay through the nose on changes. Right. And that's you know that is, you know you you end up you end up changing this for that. Whereas if if you're you know if you get the town employees doing something, you've got the flexibility that says, hey, you know, we need you to, you know, go and do this as well. If you've got that as a subcontractor, and you say, gee, I want you to go and do this as well. He's going to say, absolutely. Now here's my change. Where's my change order? Yeah, yeah. You got. I mean, that's standard bit procedure. Yeah. We got to get a standard so, I mean, change you know, order. So, you know, so I mean, that's you know, I mean, you know, you know because you know back. I remember how many years ago it was. We we came close to shutting you know to shutting down public works and going to all subcontract. And still we that was when, well, Nathan, when, when Nathan Four was here. Yeah, there was no public works. And you know at that point, you know all of a sudden it hit home on who's going to write all the who's going to write and administer all the subcontracts, and that became a big issue too. <laughs> so you know so I mean you know there's always there's always a happy mix. Right. And all, that's, yeah, that's all I'm saying is, is that I just saw that as a um, the way we're doing it now. It will always be cheaper to do it in house. Mm -hmm. When I don't think that's there, I don't think we're, that what, does not necessarily give you a happy mix. Yeah, Peter. The uh, <clears throat> cost of uh, payroll costs and overheads associated with the you know, town employees that is basically once once it's uh, in place is almost a fixed cost for one year. And that's going to be there whether they're sitting on a, in a chair somewhere or working. When you uh, hire a private contractor, he's going to add on all of that again. So the increment, the increment of the private contractor is always going to be more. The towns well, okay. So that that's built in automatically. So they're only going At, to right. I agree. At that employment level. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole my whole point is start, and I'm not saying you make this change. I'm, all I'm saying is, from an accounting perspective, you start looking at it, saying long term. You may say, okay, maybe we, if in fact we use more private contractors, maybe we don't need as many people in accounting, or maybe we, you know, where is that balance? All I'm saying right now is. I can't look at this and make a c correct decision because there's there's the comparison isn't equal. That's all I'm saying. Um, I mean, private industry would say if if you, if you look at it, I know I'm trying to, to make the town into a private company, but if you a private industry would say it's not fixed for the year. If business goes up, we got to hire more people. If business goes down, we're going to have to right. trim things. Adjust trim things. So adjust your employment. Yeah. Well, your fixed overhead typically is your building lights, equipment. Right. Yes. Right. I mean that you know, and that gets amortized across the whole, the whole uh, cost base. But that goes back to the questions of what decisions were made on, on District Two as well. I mean, I, I guess I'm saying this can all feed into a lot of other, a lot of decisions that are being made. Uh, your questions on District Two. I, I didn't well, I know. I know. That in the past, money was was spent to, I believe, to upgrade it. Or the question then comes down again: if you're comparing 
with overhead, do you need that facility? Okay. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And and it, and what's happened is, it's yes, we've needed it because the decisions that have been that we, we can do it cheaper in house. Therefore, we need the facility. Therefore, we need the equipment. Therefore, we need this. Do you see where I'm going? No. Is there a thing if you review that project that went through an RFP process for the electricians? No, I know, but but did we need that? Do we need that facility? Well, the, oh. the facility is. I think if you talk to the people in North Raymond, yeah, yeah, yeah. the overarching the overarching thing, thing there, the there is responsible. They live in North Raymond. They need that. Facility. The over the overarching thing there is responsible. Well, I was talking more for public works, not for um, fire and rescue. Uh, is it, it's kind of split use. Only the. Fire and rescue portion was renovated, not okay. the, not the public works portion of it, and that was an RFP process. What, what, what item are you on here now? I'm not. Is this, <laughs> still, I can't wait until we get to number eight. <laughs> yeah, is this is well, this we're, still fine? We're, 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 we I, we kind of combined four and five as we're discussing. Okay. We're still, you know, we're still looking at, you know, it's, well, like it's it. items, uh, you know, relative to items received. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do have a question. Right now. May, may, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps yeah. everyone knows the answer to this, but I don't. Uh, we spent quite a lot of time uh, talking about the proposed uh, cell tower sale, the lot, yeah. and how well that would help us in everything. Uh, meeting our financial responsibility, and I, I haven't heard anything about it since, since we voted at town meeting. So it went through. It okay. Yeah. It well, went what, through and it closed. Was it advertised? Is it on the website or anywhere? Because I just never heard anything. Oh, we about cashed it. a check and ran. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, if anybody's foolish enough to pay that much for an acre of land. Did, well, did it did it happen the way we yeah. expected? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because what was a, what was what was approved at the town meeting was the was the you know that draft contract that was there, which mm -hmm. just laid out the payment terms and, and what was what was being done and whatnot. And that's that's what went through, and that's what the closing was done. Okay. And, and where where did the proceeds go? What what account? Where in the accounting system? You go in the checking account, or some went to paving. Yeah, okay. yeah. Some went to a uh, fire department. Uh, uh, fund balance. Yeah. And some went to, you know, some yeah. ended up in, you know, I mean, it, 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 you know, it went into the general fund and it'll end up in the, in the fund balance. Okay, so it's all nice to, yeah. Yeah. to hear this, but <laughs> I'd like to see, have somebody write that down and say, here's where it went. I, I believe Nancy, if she said, this is where I, that I did with it. Just, just yeah. for my own education. And, uh, also, I should come through on the uh, on the revenue sh of the uh, yeah. you, you on the uh, on the. And when did when did it occur? It's appropriation so control report. Yeah, but it's not. But, but they it's don't uh, break it down. It's uh, in the top. July report. Right. Uh, depends yeah. on when the actual closing was. Okay. That's, 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 uh, that's, will that go that's into the miscellaneous so revenue? When, as a committee, uh, I'm not sure. I'll, 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 I'll check and see. Well, maybe when, when we start, I didn't look yeah. at the July because I didn't think that was a yeah, history of all of We're just about, uh, the result of all this, as I've said two or three times, is the, the final mill rate that the selectmen will decide about one month from now. And that, that's, that's the one that tickles our pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of this is a lot of talking and juggling of numbers and everything. But that's the one that I really, to me, that's the proof of the pudding mm -hmm. when that happens. And uh, there was quite a few major pieces to that puzzle that were up in the air at one point. I think the state revenue sharing is fairly well settled now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the homestead, et cetera, uh, non tax well, revenue, I think Nancy's getting a good handle on that. Uh, so, uh, the one question I had was on the RSU uh, expense. Has that had any significant change lately? It was, a, it was originally for the year, if my glasses can help me here, 8202 
Uh, I don't think that is. That didn't, it didn't, it didn't change from what was in there when, when we were looking at it, because that's what, that's what went, uh, that's what got approved at the public hearing, and that's, and, and that was also approved on the referendum. And, right. The so total that, budget. So no, nothing has changed since then? No. Okay. That, with the various press items that you read about, you, you always wonder, did something change? Because people are always they, saying... They didn't get any more money. Okay, that's good. What you're <laughs> <laughs> the mill rate shouldn't change significantly. From current? Current. Yeah, my estimate is uh, a one and a half percent increase. Because it depends on the overlay. And that's totally up to the select board. But this, this committee apparently has no authority uh, Not on to the overlay, no. No. <clears throat> no but well, they don't have to use the overlay. We didn't take any money from the undesignated fund no. balance right. to uh, stay under LV1, so. No, but the overlay isn't, isn't used to... Well, that's what they used to. Yeah. They used I mean, to use the overlay to give yeah. back yeah. that money yeah. that they used to yeah. take. I mean, essentially, it's supposed to. You know, I mean, it's supposed to be there to help cover you for uh, abatements. Number one, number yeah. two is is unpaid unpaid taxes and things like that. So you don't have to go out on TANs or anything like that. Yeah. Anyway, I've made my mill rate speech for this year. <laughs> I'll wait till the September <laughs> select board meeting. Okay. Any old business? So on the, on the timing on the meetings, and we'll just wait till you find out when the right. the waters report will set our first. Yep. and that'll meeting. set the that'll right. set that yeah. first quarterly meeting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. New business. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor.